So in this chapter, we're going to talk about multivariable calculus. So with this video, we're going to talk about the introduction to multivariable calculus, which is functions of um, several variables. We do introduction. We're going to talk about the geometric representation of functions. We're going to talk about basic um, concept of ranges, level curves, and uh, level surface. So, and in the next video, we're going to talk about limits and continuity. In the next two videos, we're going to talk about partial derivatives. So this is chapter one, which talks about the introduction. So um, with the reference material, I'm using two reference materials here, early transcendental calculus book and also um, Dr. R. Osu slides for multivariable calculus, which is mass, math 252. Let's get into it. So with this, we're going to talk about basically from this side to the level and the surface curve. And then in the next video, we're going to talk about limits and continuity. In the next video, we're going to talk about derivatives and we're going to talk about mid sem review questions. So with this, I have a mid sem review question, which is computer based with solutions. So I'm going to explain with the solution for you to understand. And I, I hope you get the same because we had the same thing in our era, even though it's not the same thing, but it's the same, it follows the same procedure. So the questions has been changed, but not um, the way of solving it's the same thing. So let's get into it. So we're going to talk about functions of several variables. So the course multivariable calculus, when you talk about multivariable calculus, what do you mean about multivariable calculus? So we want to talk about several variables. You no, know, when you talk about several variables, that is more than um two, right? Or yeah, several more than one can be it right so we have um the double variable and the triple variable so we have the variables with three three variables and also two var um two variables so with this the multi means that it has more than two or even two which is a multivariable calculus so let's explain something here by a function of several variables we mean a function f defines a subset of d now look at where i've um lighted with um highlighted with the yellow color this means that there are certain um symbols in um, the mathematics that you need to understand before so with this the highlighted one i'm going to explain it to you so you need to keep it in your head right so they say that the function of several variables we mean a function f defined on the word the subset of the r exponent n for some n it's um it's an element of natural numbers with the values of r we write is um, in this part as f is, 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 a, is a function of d which we, um, maps onto the row number. So with this, all that we need to know is that right, um, we have a function which is a subset of um, um, r exponent n. In this case, r exponent n is and uh, the n represents an element which is a natural number with the values in the row numbers, right? Yes. So I'm going to use one book to explain the difference between the double variables and this one. So when you talk about a function of two variables, what does it mean? So a function of two variables, we have X and Y. So it contains only X and Y. And in this case, with the two variables, we have only one being the dependent variable and one being the what? The independent variables, right? But when you talk about a function of three variables, this means that we could have three variables, which is X, Y, Z. But in this case, we could have X being the dependent variable and yz being the independent variable. So in this case, the dependency and the independency changes. What I mean is that, for example, let me take this, um, let me draw something here. If I write, let's um, take something like this. If I write that um, z is equal to maybe x then plus y. In this case, what this means is that the z becomes the dependent variable, which is the multivariable. That is the three function of three variables, and the x and the y becomes the independent variable. So what happens to x and y happens to z. That is it. Let's get going. So that's the explanation given to you. So for this, the set d on f is defined, which is defined f is called domain. Yeah, you know domain of the function. And it's set for all values of f. 
that is the set of what x1 to xn comma x1 to xn are element of what the what d which is the domain then we call it a range so these are all explanation that you, sh you should know yeah please i'm going to explain this um explanation for you that's what i was trying to explain here now in this case we have this in and in that case x1 to xn xn are called the independent variable and then z is called the dependent variable as i explained because z is equal to the function of this which means that the z is the dependent variable and the x1 to xn is the independent variable as compared to the uh, the single variable that we have that maybe y is equal to x that is why dy dx therefore the y becomes the dependent variable and the s becomes the independent variable let's continue so when you talk about the geometric uh, representation of the function you know the function can be expressed or uh, can be, you can use uh, geographic that is a plane or a surface to um, show the functions right so in this case with the two you know with two variables we can have the plane xy plane with the three variable we have a surface that is what they are trying to explain here so you should know that in the two variables that is n that's our exponent two it's a surface we can have it here that a function of two variables represents a surface in the three dimension right in such a way that the projection of xy plane is the domain yes and each line is parallel to what the z plane it does is true through a point of d that has a surface as one end right yes so that's what it means right so it corresponds though given to a function f uh, the function of d uh, mapping onto the ronama the corresponding surface is the set of all point x y z they are all elements of what r exponents and as we said that r exponents and in this case how many variables we have here is three so r exponent three which means that z is equal to the function of x and y which means that z becomes the dependent variable and the x and y becomes the independent variable let's get that so we are going to talk about level surface and level curve for example i'm putting an array here which means that i want to explain the contour and the perspective view when you see a hill and you stand there you see it to be like this but imagine you're an airplane or you're an helicopter and you look at the plan of it like on top of it which is the contour you see that this is going to project this way so this is a contour map of what the model hill but this is the perspective view of a model hill with two galleys right but you being at the top of it you're going to see it as this, as this. i get and we have it range from one two three four five but when you look at this it's like a circular part so this is how the surface looks like right now what you talk about the difference between the level curve and the level surface so look at this let f be a function defined on what the d being a subset of our exponent 2 that the subset of d form x y is an element of d then x y function of x y is equal to c accord level curve let's put that accord level a uh, level curve of f where c is an element of r right but in case of um the three variables is defined as what the d being a subset of r exponent 3 then the subset of d of the form will take this way so let me explain this in a way which is called the level surface so with that in the three dimension we that is the in three variables we are going to have a level surface but in the two dimension that's the in the two um variables you're going to have the level curve so have the difference between the level curve and the level surface that's the difference right yes so now let's take as an example. This is all example that you need to understand. So do the level curve of F corresponds to the intersection of SF with the X uh, the Z plane being called to C. The level curve is a projection of the intersection on the domain, right? Please, I'm going to show you some curves. You, you, you're going to love it, right? Some curves and how the contour side and this one. So you appreciate the course. With this, we have the surface. This is the level surface of it, and this is the level surface of that right so we have two um variables as the two functions with different level surface depend on how you plot them now let's go back to the book i'm using i want to show you something here with this book they have when you talk about the planes i'm going to show you so with this we have a plane here and with this we have the contour plot and the surface plot so when you stand on this when you're on the on top of this this is how you see it 
right so please get note of this you see all these are some visual representation that you understand the course very well i get in it here yes so now let's go on to um, the basic concepts so all these are introduction what you need to know i think this is an open index and a closed index what do you what do you mean by open index and closed index let's go to the open index now when talk about open index how do you know it means that uh an open index contains none of the points on its boundary so it's like it's open so none of the points is part right but with a closed disk you see this is an this is a closed disk and this is an open index you can see that a closed disk includes all the points on its what bounding the what circle so let's read something here the set of all points u being called what x and y is an element of r square that satisfy u minus u naught should be less than r it's called an open index with a center u being x naught y naught with a radius of r now let's see something with this you see this if r let's see something here this is the difference so when it comes in the exams and they want you to understand or state the difference between the open this and the closed this using the expression you should know that it's the same expression but with the closed this is less than or equal to because the points on the boundary circle is included that's it that's a secret these are all things that you did bounded set on bounded set we have interior points this you did this and um is it um is it um first semester yeah calculus analysis yes you did this points so we, i think you have the idea on this one the closed set and you, know, you have you have this i think these are trying to explain you give you more explanation on that but from the explanation i gave you you will understand this when you sit down and you understand it. So when you talk about open ball and closed ball, um, you also have a closed ball and an open ball, right? Let's look at something. So we have an open index and a closed index. Open index and an open ball, sure. So given a particular U naught, right? So let's see something here. You see where the um, open index, it is U minus U naught. The absolute value of u minus u naught being less than r, but with the open ball, look at the highlighted one is x minus u naught absolute value less than r, whereby the u naught is a particular what point, and the x is the set of all points that is acting on the what on the x, which is what an element of what r exponent n that satisfies that the absolute value of x minus u is less than r so that's the difference right so you should get a difference between the open index and the open ball yeah so some something that you need to know here it's very important these are all some um some features you need to know an open index an open set d is said to be connected if any two points in the d can be joined by a line segment line in d an open an open index is um, connected to the set called a domain, a set which consists of a domain continue, uh, con together with some or all its boundary is called a region. So um, with this one, you're going to talk about converge and diverge, right? You know, these are all, uh, these are all, you are furthering calculus with analysis. So you took calculus analysis, you understand this very well. If you really understand calculus analysis, you can go back to it, check the description. Um, I have a playlist of calculus analysis, but it's not necessary for you to go back, but at least get an idea on that, right? So convergence and divergence, they are all properties that you need to understand that um if un converges to you, then you can write that un is equal to uh, is maps onto you, or the limits of un as n approaches to infinity is equal to you. Yes, this with this course you're going to talk the next video are going to talk about limits and continuity. And I think you are you are going to appreciate it. And I'm going to give you some simple ways to do it. Fast fast. You understand? That's what you are here for. So thank you very much for watching this video. This is an introduction of that. So the next video we're going to talk about limits and continuity. Thank you very much.